What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to another question dealing with exponents. This is going to be a word problem here. So we're told that the doubling time of bacteria A is 10 minutes and starts at an initial population of 10, meaning that the quantity of the bacteria is doubling every 10 minutes. And then bacteria B, we're told has a doubling time and initial population of half hour. So it's doubling every 30 minutes and it has an initial population of 640. Given that scenario, part A, we have to figure out when will both bacteria have the same population. And then in part B, we have to represent each bacteria or the quantity of each bacteria with an equation where X is either going to represent part one, the number of doubling periods, or part two, the number of minutes. These two equations, they're going to be different. Usually textbooks ask you at this point in grade nine, they ask you for the number of doubling periods, but I decided to add the number of minutes in case your teacher wants to make it a little bit more difficult. So for part A, to figure out when both will have the same population, I feel like the best way to go about it is to make a table of values, right? So I'm going to erase this here. I think bacteria A is gonna have a bigger table than bacteria B. So for bacteria A, if we make this table here, so we'll have the time that goes by, and then we'll have the quantity of the bacteria. So at time zero, it has a quantity of 10, right? We're told that it starts with a quantity of 10. So in 10 minutes, so this time here, let's actually write this as time in minutes. So this bacteria doubles every 10 minutes. So we can go up by tens here. So at the 10 minute mark, what's the quantity going to be? Well, it's going to be 20. It's going to double from 10. 20 minutes, it's going to have a quantity of 40. 30, it's going to have a quantity of 80. And then at the 40 minute mark, it's going to have a quantity of 160. And then 50, it's going to have a quantity of what? Uh, 320? 60, 640, and then 70 minute mark, it's gonna be 1280. And then at the 80 minute mark, it's gonna be 2560, right? Doubling this. And then at the 90 minute mark, it's gonna be 5120. And then let's go up to 100 minutes. So doubling 5120, that would give us 10,240, like that, right? So that's going to be the quantity of bacteria A after 100 minutes, right? It's doubling every 10 minutes. Now, bacteria B, we're told what? It's a little bit different, the parameters that we are given for it. We're still gonna be dealing with time. We're told that the doubling time is every half hour, so every 30 minutes. We're still gonna keep the table in minutes just to keep both of these consistent. And then the quantity of bacteria B, we're told that it's starting at an initial population of what, 640, right? And so it's going to double every 30 minutes. So we can go up by 30 minutes here on this table. So at the 30 minute mark, it's gonna be 1280. At the 60 minute mark, right after an hour, it's going to be 2,560. And then at the 90 minute mark, it's going to be 5,120. And then notice here and here, right at the 90 minute mark, both of them are going to have the same quantity. So sometimes it takes a few entries to figure out when both bacteria are going to have the same quantity. Like notice this table, it's a lot bigger than this one because this one started at a higher initial population and then the doubling time was longer. This one was, it's doubling faster, right? It's doubling every 10 minutes, but it started at a lower population, right? But eventually 
both of them have the same population of 5,120 at the 90 minute mark. So that is the answer to part A. Now, what if we were to make equations for this? And we're gonna be making equations and in part B, first we're gonna let X represent in part one of part B, we're gonna let X represent the number of doubling periods. Right, so what we can do is a doubling period for bacteria A is 10 minutes. And so if we were to create another column here, let's call it number of doubling periods. So we're not looking at minutes uh, per se, we're just looking at the number of periods that it's gonna double. So we're starting at zero, then the first doubling period, it's gonna be at 20. The second doubling period is gonna be at 40. The third doubling period is gonna be at 80. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, nine, and 10. Right, we're not looking at minutes, we're looking at the number of doubling periods. Same thing here, if we create another column, right? So number of doubling periods. The doubling period for bacteria B is 30 minutes. So we could start here at zero, and then the first doubling period, it's gonna be one, that's gonna be the 30 minute mark, right? It doubles to that, then the second doubling period doubles to that, third doubling period, it goes from this to that, it doubles there, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create equations where we're letting X represent the number of doubling periods, not the minutes, that's what we're gonna do in part two, right? So you kinda wanna ignore this column, just pretend that you have a table of this and then this over here, right? Ignore this column, you got a table with this column and then this column, and we gotta create an equation for that. So let's create the equations over here, so for bacteria, a, and then we could say bacteria B. So we're letting X be the number of doubling periods. I'm gonna let, let's let the quantity equal A, the amount, let's say. So A is the quantity. Actually, you know what, let's just keep it as Y. Again, you can label these variables however you want. A lot of times you'll see this, instead of X, they'll have T for time, right? So it doesn't really matter what letters you're using here. I'm just gonna keep it as Y and X. So I'm gonna let Y equal the quantity of bacteria. Right, so we labeled the variables, introduced the variables. So it's like for part one and part B, this is like the X, this is the Y. This is like the X, this is the Y. So starting off with bacteria A, how can we make an equation relating the X and the Y? Well, it's pretty simple. We can just say Y is equal to the initial population 10, and then that's doubling to the power of the number of doubling periods like that. That would be the equation that relates this column and then that column. And then you could test that out. Right, so we can say, we could take this equation, y equals 10 to the power of, or 10 times two to the power of x. And then we could plug in some of these x values. So let's say we plug in zero, right? So we'll have y equals 10 times two to the power of zero. Well, we should get 10, let's see if we do. Two to the power of zero is just one times 10 does indeed give us 10. What if we put instead, let's say, I don't know, let's say five. Let's test this five here. What should we get? We should get 320. So notice two to the power of five is 32, right? We have to do the exponent first before the multiplying. Remember your bed mass. Two to the power of five is 32 times 10 does indeed give us that 320, right? And you could plug in any of these here into that formula and it should give the corresponding quantity or the corresponding y value, 
right? So that's how you create the equation for bacteria A. And then following that same format for bacteria B, it would just be Y equals the initial population 640 2 to the power of X. The reason why the base is 2 because we're dealing with doubling periods. If it was tripling, this would be 3. Or if it was decaying, let's say we're going to be dealing with half-life, we're going to do a video on that next, then this base would be a half right here. But it's doubling, so this base is 2. That's where that base of 2 comes from. right? And then this is just the initial population, so that ends up being the equation for bacteria B. Again, you could test it. You could plug in, for example, 0 for x, 2 to the power of 0 is 1 times 640, gives you that. Or you can... Um, Plug in 2, for example, 2 to the power of 2 gives you 4 times 640 would give you that 2,560. So you could plug in any of these x values here and you would get these corresponding y values. Right, so those are the two equations if we let x equal the number of doubling periods. So that was part 1 for part b. Now part 2, it's a little bit trickier, but it's not too bad. Um, what we're going to do in part two for part B is we're going to let X equal the number of minutes. So we're not going to keep it as these doubling periods. Now we're going to be using this column here, the actual minutes as X. So how is that going to change things? So X equals the number of minutes that pass by. So now instead of having this column as X, we're going to have this column here as X. Let's see how it changes things. Well, if you think about it, what we got to do, let's say that we are, uh, let's say we're dealing with this row here, right? The second doubling period. So at the 20 minute mark, it should have a quantity of 40, right? The question is, how can we plug in 20 into an equation and get that quantity of 40. Well, if you notice, if we keep this, actually this and this, it's still gonna stay there, that initial population, then the doubling time, the format of the exponent is gonna change. So the question is, how can we plug in 20 into the exponent and get the exponent equaling two? Well, what we can do, right, is we can take the time and divide it by the doubling period. The doubling period for bacteria A is every 10 minutes. And so if we let x equal the number of minutes, this is going to be the equation now, right? It's going to be 10 times 2 to the power of x over 10. Because we're not just dealing with the doubling period right, which would just be plugging in this into the exponent. We have to plug in this, but we have to convert each of these to this because we want that full exponent to be these numbers over here because that's going to give us the quantity. And so notice how is this column relating to this one? Well, we're just dividing each of these by 10 to get that. And so that's what the exponent would be if we let x equal the number of minutes, all right? Hopefully that made sense. I know it's, it's a little bit tough to explain. You may have to rewatch that explanation, but you could test this as well. So we can, for example, plug in 60, right? So we'll have, if we plug in 60 for x here, we'll have 60 over 10. That would give us six. Two to the power of six would give us 64 times 10 would give us that amount of 640, right? Or we could plug in 80, right? 80 over 10 is eight. Two to the power of eight would give us uh, 256. Multiplied by 10 would give us 2,560, right? So notice how the equation changes. Only the exponent changes if we let x equal the number of minutes. And then same thing for bacteria B. Initial population is still 640. Um, this, it's still doubling, right? So the base is two, but now instead of putting X, we're gonna put the time over 30. Because we want the exponent to be this, so how do we get this to that, this to that, this to that? Well, we would just divide those by 30, 
right? And then you could test that equation out as well, right? So if we plug in, for example, 90 for x, we'll have 90 divided by 30, which is 3. 2 to the power of 3 would give us 8. 640 times 8 would give us 5,120. So be careful with what they're asking the x values to be. If they're, num if they're the number of doubling periods, it's a little bit easier. You just have to put x in the exponents. But if it's the number of minutes, then you've got to do a little bit of algebra within that exponent to get the exponent to be that. Right? And you just basically divide it by v doubling time in order to do that and make sure that whenever you get your equation, you're testing it out. Another thing I didn't mention, you can also with these plug in zero, that base case, because zero over 10 or zero over 30, that's gonna give us zero, two to the power of zero, two to the power of zero is one, times one is 10, initial population, times 640 is uh, 640, right? One times 640 is 640. All right, so hopefully that made sense. Fairly intense question and hopefully you understand the difference in both types of equations.